Today we are going to have is the workshop one. It's one of the three in our workshop series, and we will have three different Unity workshop going through the whole term one by one. So this is the first one. Here is the pre poster I have made a demo for what we will learn today. You can use the Google Meshes in Unity, and you can transfer in the camera. And there's a lot of things. Oh, and my name is Holly. You can also call me Chang. I'm one of the research assistants at TV Lab. I will start with what will be learned today. And you guys can also access this PowerPoint by go through your email. I send you guys a link just for click it. You can see there's a Notion web website open up. If you clicked before workshop, there's the pre-material I have already sent it out before. If you clicked presentation, we'll have all the material I'm showing on screen because there are some material need us to copy and paste into Unity while we're doing the workshop. Better if you guys keep that website open. Okay, let's back to the main topic. What will we learn today for the workshop? By the beginning, we, I will introduce some basic knowledges about how to quickly start with Unity. Whether you never used the Unity before or you have used it but haven't touched it for a very long time, it will help you quickly getting into it and getting started with Unity. And number two is the most exciting part, which is how to insert your Google, Google Maps 3D meshes in Unity. So for us as an architect, we can access to the whole world through Unity, which is really exciting and really helpful for our set analysis and for our presentation. From number three, it's very crucial and basic thing we got to know is how to import our Rhino model into Unity because we don't want to remake our whole model in Unity again. We want to import it directly and do some annotation in Unity. Number four is 3D sound. It's pretty simple, couple clicks, which help you create a 3D atmosphere sound around the year. So when you show the video or when you want to create a VR or AR, the sound is really crucial for making the space really real and vivid. Number five is the camera animation. For example, like the demo I have showing is just basically teaching you how to set up the camera angle and how to make them transfer in between. Just imagine you are making a movie. And number six is the video rendering. That's basically mean how to export your all the amazing annotation, all the cameras transferring into one video output. Before we started with step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to talk about what is TV Lab. Some of you might already been here a couple of times, and some of you are pretty new here. TV Lab is a very flexible, collaborative, and accessible space equipped with a broad range of the XR-related technologies, which include augmented reality, also like VR, and we have a new 3D scanning machine available for everyone to use in the locker. We have a spatial mapping equipment available to use. And additionally, like today, the, the labs offer resources for virtual production and capture technology, like video cameras, 630 cameras, and drones, couple of things like that. And that we even got a robot on the back, which is accessible, and that can combine the immersive technology with the fabrication process. The whole space is designed for sharing and learning collaboration. I hope everyone will enjoy using the lab and making the most of it for yourself. And finally, get into the Unity part. Before we really started to learn how to make a project at Unity, we got to know what is Unity because I personally really confused at the beginning. I'm wondering why me as an architect need to learn a Unity software. Because you know, Unity it's begin as a game engine. It has been involving different tools and it can be used by many industries. So me as an architect, I want to know what I can get from this game engine. What is a game engine? A game engine is the point of convergence of all aspects of creating a game 
For example, you can imagine you are cooking and Unity software is like a big pot. You can throw your 3D model in, add some texture, add some audio, and you can even write some your own scripts. There's two very famous games created by Unity. There's the first one called Pokemon Go, and second one is one of my personal favorite. It's called Monument Valley. Let's get back to our role. What can Unity do for architecture-related designers? I found a video on YouTube by their official website. I think it can explain better than me. So let's watch it together. You can see how Unity software can be a very powerful tool through the concept stage to the construction stage, which is really potential and worth to learn for us as an architect. Let's get into it. For the first step, let's open the Rhino model. I have sent it out through the email. It's all in this file called download before workshop one. And there's one folder called Rhino model. For the other building layer, you can either turn it off or you can lock it because we are not going to use it for today, but we will not use it for today. No worry if there is no interior people layer Rhino project. And also no worry if there is no lightings in your project because no one have it I, I don't have it too so for the first step you can see most of the time we will have our rhino model ready to use in our rhino before we really started to export it at certain format of the 3d model we gotta do extra step because for us to export the model we have to let unity know all of our material want to be in the same density. For, for us to do that, to the layer, because I already put the same components, same material components in the same layer. Only select the stairways layer and turn off other layer. As you can see right now, there's only stairways in our space. Let's select all of the stairway layer components and then let's go to property on the top and then let's click texture mapping also on the top and there's a small black and white 3d box it's called applying box mapping so let's click that and then you can see there's some selection multiple selections for you to choose Let's all click founding box, click word, and click yes. That's done for our stairway. I will do it again, no worry if you didn't follow up, because we have no lighting on our model. Let's do interior wall. And for do the interior wall, let's also turn off rest of other layer, select all of them, do the same step as before. Go to property, then choose texture mapping, box mapping. Then let's choose bounding box. Choose the word as your coordinate system. Click yes. Then let's finish for interior, interior wall layer. So the next step, you guys might know what we're going to do is doing the same thing again and again for all different layer. Since we don't have an interior people, we just, we can just directly turn it off and also turn the interior wall off because we already done it. Let's only leave the glass layer on. Just do the same thing. Texture mapping, box mapping, and bounding box. 
ordered and yes. Okay, the glass layer is done. As you can see, there's only one object in our climbing wall, which means you don't have to do that because there's only one piece of object. You don't have to unify the texture's density. We don't do it for other buildings because we are not going to use it for today. For our Tokyo circle and arrow layer, because I'm thinking to make it as the same material, although they are on different layer, we can still do it one time which means for make your life easier, just put all the material, same material game object in one layer. After we finish, let's just turn all the layer on beside the other building layer. Before we started to export it, let's leave it alone, just minimize the window and let's create a, create a unity project first. And then I think you guys already download the Unity Hub and let's all go to open up the Unity Hub. And before we start a new project, I will talk with you guys about what what is all this panel and what is Unity Hub. And Unity Hub is just a resource center you can access to the new version of Unity from installs. And you can find a lot of useful learning resources from the learning section. And you can also access to Unity SX Store, which is something similar to FabLab. You can gain access for multiple free 2D or 3D resources. But the most section we will use is the project section because we are gonna need to create a new project every time from this project section in Unity Hub. For create a new project, let's all click new project. The most common template we will use is 3D URP. You can search a location which you can remember. Remember where you save it because we will need to use it later. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it Unity Workshop. After you give it a name and give it a location, you can for sure remember. I'll click create project. Unity always take have to one minute to create a project. While well, we are waiting for the Unity to turn itself on, go back to the Rhino project. For export the, the Rhino project, let's select all of it and don't delete this point. But if you delete it, you can create another one by yourself. It doesn't matter for where this point placed. The only reason I'm having that to every time we can do just export with origin. And then we can click the same point every time. So later, if we want to update our Rhino model, you can just save it by the same name, same location again, like the Lumia thing, like the Lumia render software, right? You can, it will update itself automatically. But if you don't export it with the same point, it will still be updated, but it will move around. The place will change. We don't want that to happen. So every time, make sure you got a random point stay somewhere in your, around your model and time you just select all of it, export with origin, and then you click this small point. Then we wanted to export it as OBJ it's right here called OBJ. Let's also need to select a place where we want to save it. Do you guys remember where you save your Unity project? There will be a project folder create by Unity for you. If you click it, even the, the project is not finished to open itself up, they already started to create a folder for you. You can click the asset. Let's click a new folder called Rhino Model. 
save our Rhino model in, and I'm just going to name a model. And then there will be the OBJ export option uh, available for you to choose. You guys need to follow the all the options and your interface might be a little bit different based on your different system, but the option should be mostly, most of the important options should be the same. The most important thing is to choose polygon mesh, not the NURBS, because Unity only recognize the polygon meshes. While you guys are starting the Unity project, I want to introduce a little bit about Unity's interface. So while we'll we waiting for others, we can learn some basic information. Your Unity project, if you already open it up, it should totally look like that. There are different use for different sections. For the, for the scene view in the middle, it's really similar with Rhino software. It's where you can rotate your model and you can modify add-on animation. For the game view, which basically you can think about it as your camera view, like for example, if you align your game view with your certain display, one, two, three, your different camera, you can see it from different angle and you can also see your camera transmission in this game section. So this is the back of the stage. And the game view is the front of the stage, is your preview of your final output of your work. On the side, there's the hierarchy section. It's a little bit like the layer that section on our Rhino. So everything you can see in the same view, whether it's a camera or it's lighting or whatever it is, it will all shows up in your hierarchy view. For the project section, I think you can imagine as a toolbox. Whether you have it in your scene view or not, it will all shows up in your toolbox. Do you guys remember the previous Rhino model we got we had we, we import? It's like we import it into our toolbox. It will automatically update in my in my Unity once I import it in. The game object inspector is like the all the property related to the components you select. And the unit, we don't call the components as components like what we call it in Rhino, we call it game object. Just remember when other people call all oh, this game object, that game object is just the element in our scene view. And you guys don't need to follow. I'm just doing this for doing the tutorial, but you, you guys don't need to follow. So if you want, ever want to create something, you can right click on the hierarchy view. For example, if I want to create a cube, I can just click 3D object and cube. Once my hierarchy view got a cube layer comes out, there is a real cube happening on my scene view. Right now, because I'm selecting the cube, you can see the inspector section are showing all the property related to this cube. There's some toolbox like the view tool, which means you can drag the view up or down. For assessing the hand tools, you can either click it or you can you can click Q. It will automatically give you this hand tools. Assess this move tool, you can either click the move tool or click W. It will give you this move tool, which you guys probably all know how to use the move tool. It's pretty simple and similar. For the third one is the rotation tool which you can rotate it around. And you can also scale it up or down by the scale tool. The rack tool is, is mainly using the UI design. And for the last one, transformation tool, is just a tool that you can do everything. It's just a combining of the scale and rotation, also move tool. First step, we will start is the most exciting part, which is how to import the Google Meshes in your Unity project. And for doing that, we need some external tool called Sysium. And for adding that and link that with our Unity software, we got to click Edit. And then let's go to Project Settings. If you clicked Package Manager in our project setting, you will see the section is looks like that. And we need to add Susum special name and URL and scoops to link it with the external tool we will use to import the 
Google Meshes. For all the name URL scopes information, we already have it on our website. You just you guys can directly copy it down to the Unity project. And then after you copy the name URL scopes down, let's all click save. The only linking is not enough. We're gonna need to download the external into our Unity project. For doing that, let's go to window, go to package manager. And remember where is package manager located? Cause you know, personally, if you want to keep going with Unity learning, you will need a lot of things imported from this package manager. And for size our session, we just linked this. Let's change the package from in project to my registry first. Open up from window and search package manager. Change the section to my registry and their system for Unity. And then we can click install. It will start to ask you, you want to restart? Because it need time to re to reorganize the whole system. You just click yes. See, it's just automatically open up again by itself. Open up our system. So by opening up, you can see there's already a system on the top appears. And let's click it and then click system. The system section automatically open up on your Unity project. And Right here, probably yours haven't connected with Sassoon. You can just click it and it will open up a website and you can log into your Sassoon account and it will automatically get back and get you connected with the, your Sassoon account online. After we connected, after we log into Sassoon and get connected, let's go to token. And you want to create a new token for our project. That is like an anchor and a connector that connect with the remote session server, create new project default token. And after we create a new token, we want to add a blank three details, just Plus, and then you can see there is a session georeference auto automatically add in in our hierarchy. Ex expand this session georeference button, and then we clicked session 3D tile set. We want to change this tile set source to from URL. For this URL, I think you guys might already set up for your Google API and create your new project. You can copy your API key. After you maybe copy your API from Google, from Google side, this API right here, and you can replace your own API with this part. Just copy it in. There's something magic happening in your Unity. So you can see where I'm clicking. So if you clicked your right right cursor, your right mouse, and then at the same time clicked Q, you can go in down. And for clicking your right cursor and clicked E, you can go in up. And if you think it's going too slow, you can click Shift E and your right cursor at the same time to speed up. You, if you want to go to front, you can click W and your right cursor and going speed up. Yeah, and going backward, just S and right cursor and shift. You can, for moving right is clicking A and right cursor, then shift. Moving. Uh, moving, moving right is D and right cursor, and moving left is A and right cursor. We can have a place where we can insert our longitude and latitude and height, then we can directly fly from one side of the earth to the 
another set of words. You see, there is the place for you to insert your latitude, your longitude, your height. And for finding those certain latitude, longitude, and height value, you can assess it from Google Earth. I have already found you guys the latitude and longitude for our site we will use today. And let's just all copy the value into our inspector latitude, longitude box. Adjust your place, your personal view place. You want to make yourself standing on the street, the cross section. And it's fine if it's not in the middle of it, but it's better you can make it in the middle where you adjust your personal view in the cross section center. You can click place origin here, which you won't lose your sight every time. If you feel lost, you can always change your position to zero, zero, zero and get back to it. For example, like if I'm going really, really fast, really, really far away from my site right now. Remember, I already placed my origin in somewhere and I can always click my georeference and click F to go back. So for other game object, it's the same thing. You can click it in the hierarchy and then click F. The Unity will automatically zoom in the view for you. So you can see there's the a model looks like that and is ended by the format OBJ. And you can click it. You can either drag it into hierarchy or directly drag it into your scene. I suggest just directly drag it into your scene. You see it's really big and it's definitely not the size we want. And for adjusting that, I think probably go to the top view will be better, right? So you can click the green button, this little white triangular thing on the top to switch it to the top view. We want to change the scale of it. You can either, either adjust it by the scale tool or you can just adjust it directly from the inspector. Adjust the scale by 0.3. We want to move it a little bit. So make the four, four giant span to stick into the surrounding building into the ground. The, the material is pretty weird because we haven't adjusted in our Reno model. We want to adjust our material in Unity together because sometimes even you preset the, your material in Rhino, it will got pretty messed up later in Unity. So just don't waste your time in Rhino, do it all together in Unity. Creating our own material, you can go to the our toolbox, the project section, and there's the asset down below and different folder. And there's one we already create called Rhino model. And we want to create another folder so we can put in all of our material in that folder. Let's call it materials. After we create a material folder, let's double click it. And in that material folders, let's right click again and then go to create. And there is a material option. Let's call it red for now. I want to create the material for those two game objects first, which is the Tokyo circle and the, the arrow. So I want to make a red shiny color. And for us to be able to do that, let's change our red material color to whatever red you want. And I wanted to, even if it's in the daytime, but I still wanted to having the lighting. You can select the emission. So your material right now is recognized as a lighting object. And I want to make it maybe shining. Now oh, our red new material is officially a red shining material object. And for apply onto the certain game object we want, we can 
select it in the scene view and just drag it out. It's, oh, I put too much light on it. Yeah, maybe we need to adjust it. Or you can, rather than select it and drag it directly on the scene view, you can access it from the hierarchy section and you can drag the material on that object. We want to create a glass because you know our glasses looks pretty weird. Even we did nothing in Rhino, but something wrong will always happen in Unity. So we want to recreate a material for our glass. So same step in material folder, let's click create and the material. We just call it glass. And in the surface tab, we click the glass material and in the surface tab, we want to make it transparent. Let's drag it onto our glass layer first. In the hierarchy, we can see our project, the glass layer, we can just directly drag it on. And the reason why it still looks really solid after we select transparent is because we haven't adjust the base map. It's the, the color itself is still very solid. We can adjust the opacity under our base map. By changing it, we can just directly click this white block and it will open itself and we can change the opacity of it. Normally the window will look a little bit bl bluish. I will usually just change it light blue. And the glass really glossy a little bit. So we want to always just drag the smooth value to one. That's how we can create a transparent material or glass in Unity. Now let's create the, maybe we want to create concrete. We have to do the same step, create material. And let's create a material called concrete. Let's drag our concrete material into floor layer. So the floor layer is all using this concrete material. Did you guys remember the, the file I have sent it out before? You guys don't need to close the Unity Workshop project. You can just make the folder section a little bit smaller and uh, access to download folder before the workshop. And there are some materials I create. You guys can select all of it, directly drag it under the material layer. For how to create in different kind of map for one same material, I will have a YouTube video provide in my in my website. There is right there and the after workshop section, you will know how to create your own customatic material. If you don't, you can also download some other people's finished material from Unity Asset Store. Select this concrete material for the uh, base mapping. So base mapping is the place where we apply the picture, the texture, what our material mostly will look like, which will be the concrete texture picture I have provide. So you can select this concrete layer. We gotta need to drag a lot of pictures under different section. If you don't want it to disappear, you want it to stay there for a while, you can click lock. So whatever we clicked, it will still, it will always locked on this concrete materials property in under inspector. Let's drag our concrete texture map under our base map. And let's zoom in a little bit so you can see the material is already looks different with before. And then we will want it to change the normal map. So normal map will always look a little bit bluish in our picture. So we can drag that bluish normal map into our normal map section. And the use of the normal map is to change in the height and give it a little bit more 3D texture for the material. Normally the base map and the normal map will be enough. And if it's the, some metal material, we might want to use like our 
uh, metallic page onto it so it can adjust how much this material looks like a metal material. You can also add the height map because I already named it on the on behind and you can, you can see where you need to apply it into this section. And for now, I think it's, it's pretty much enough for it to show as a concrete. First, you see the density for the material is too big. If you want to change the material's density, we're going to need to go to the tiling on the bottom. It's on the surface into input section's bottom. I want to try maybe 10 of it. And it looks a little bit normal right now. And I will just leave it right here. You guys are free to play around with different setup options because it will change the feature of the material a little bit to be more precise. Then this, this metal frame looks pretty awkward. Let's create another material and change the look of it. So let's create a material and just call it the, I create another object called metal. Then we want to unlock the, the concrete layer that we locked before so we can modify the metal game object. I'm just going to drag it directly on our frame object, or you can choose to select it and drag it directly on it. That's fine. I'm not usually for the metal material because since it's really thin and it's really hard to see the detail of it, I will just give it a color. Maybe it's, I want it to be light gray color and I want it to very much like a metal. So I will make this value bigger. If you look closer, you can see it's more looks like a metal, not a random 2D object. And I want it to be a little bit smoother because you know sometimes the metal frame can reflect a little bit of the sunlight. That's basically everything I always do for the same metal material object. And the next step we wanted to do is to add in some 3D sound like what we talked about it before. Let me create another folder called audio. And then you can drag that city traffic soundtrack into our audio. And for the, for the sound, I always like to attach it with the game object because in Unity, you can actually attach a sound with the object. It's something like the object can see in itself. I will just attach it to the arrow object. And for doing that, I can just directly drag it in to like drag it on. And after you drag it on under the inspector window, there is the audio resource automatically add in. And the audio clip is the one we just select. It's called city traffic. And you can make it select loop. So it will uh, again, hour again. Then I wanted to change the spatial blend from 2D to 3D which the Unity will automatically apply a 3D sound effect for your, for your volume to make the whole scene more realistic. And then you can change the maximum distance and the minimum distance people can hear your sound. And for this value, I gotta tell you based on different side, different project, it will all having different volume. You just have to go for it and test it a little bit, test it a couple of times back and forward to see if that is the sound effect, the distance you like. So I would just set it as 100 a default for now. If it's not working, we can go back and change it. Before we testing our sound, we gonna need to set up a camera because you see the, the game view, uh, and the display one is showing is pretty awkward. It's somewhere under our building. So that's all our main camera's responsibilities. We might want to change our main camera to somewhere maybe directly facing our model. For reset our camera's view, we can right click the main camera and select align with view on the very bottom. Align with view. So right now the camera, the main camera is aligned with the view we are seeing in the same view. If you switch back to the game, game view is already changed itself. Then let's 
play it and try the sound we just added in. Because I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. I'm not sure if 500 is full enough for us to hear. So let's test it together. And as you can see, the Google Earth meshes automatically disappear at the beginning of my clicking. And then it's started to very slowly to load, load him load him up back. So that's the thing we need to take in care of later after we export our video. So I got a solution for that, no worry. But it will come out eventually. And see, we couldn't hear it. So we might want to change the song's distance a little bit for, for us to able to hear that. I will change that to 2000. Yeah, the volume is already to the maximum. And I think this time would be fine. And I will zoom a little bit closer. Every time when you want to adjust something for your Unity project, close your play mode. So it will allow you to adjust it. So let me just do a little bit closer view and right click for the main camera, align with view again. So I'm getting closer and let's run it again to see if we can hear it or not this time. You guys hear it? A little bit of the, the car sound. Let's change the distance a little bit higher. I will change it to 5,000 and let's just leave it alone. And you see in the real time practice, you're gonna need to go back and forward, go to game view testing and go back to the same view, change the value. So that's the thing always happen pretty normal. It's good that we already make sure the sound is working. Next step is to learn how to transfer from one angle to another, like doing a transformation process. And for doing that, we got to need to go back to the window and package manager, and we need to add two extra plugin to make that work. Let's go to the uh, Unity registry and let's select, so let's search Cine Machine, install it. You can type CIN, then the cinema machine will automatically pop up. You might need to take some time to download it. And the main use for the cinema machine is to helping us transfer our camera from camera one to camera two to camera three to connect all of our camera together. Other than the cinema machine, we're gonna need to search for another tool called recorder. Let's install it too. So this recorder is as a recording track to record all of the camera transformation. So one is responsible for transformation step and another is for catch a camera and recording all the process you set up. After we download that, let's all go to window sequencing and add on a timeline. Some of you might already have it. If you have it, you can just directly click it. If you don't, just go to window, sequencing and timeline. We want to select all of the game object under our hierarchy. You just select all of them. Not the scene, not the sample scene. Just click everything under the sample scene. Clicked, we want to click create and Let's just save it. And then don't release your selection yet. Let's, before you release it, let's lock it. And after we create a timeline for our final output movie, right click under the timeline, this empty space on the, on the left, and right click it, create a cinema track. Drag our main camera as the brain for our cinema track, cinema machine. After we having our cinema, cinema machine track, and let's right click on the other side, click add cinema machine shot. This cinema machine shot means how much camera you want it to include in the in your whole movie, your whole video. For the demo, we will run in this tutorial. I will only do five of it. It's normally for a short video, for 10 seconds, 
I'm probably for 20 seconds, I'm probably going to need to use 10 of it. Angle in between means how much the time the camera will transfer in between. And the flight area, it depends how long the camera different angle will stay there. If you want the transmission in between of different camera to be longer, you can make the sloping area to be longer. But if you want people to see the certain camera more clearly, you, you want people to watch it longer, you can make the uh rec you can make the rectangular space longer. Add three more cinema machine shot in it. So we have five cinema machine shot ready for us to input some certain angle of camera. And by creating a camera for this different step, different cinema machine shot, we can click it. Then there will be something pop up in the inspector window. You see in the virtual camera, it shows, no, there's no camera set up because we haven't do it. So for doing that, let's all click create. Under the hierarchy, there will be a virtual camera automatically shows up. Normally, I will just change the name of it. I won't be lose my brain later. And for the second one, we do the same thing. Click it and under the inspector section, let's click create. So let's change the name of it by cam2. And for number three, we will just do a one-on-one. -on -one. All same thing. Rename it and let's name it camera three. Create camera four. Okay, last one. Click it, virtual camera, create, and change the virtual camera's name to be camera five. Okay, then we are done for creating all the camera for different section. I'm planning to make a video which is people's view going a little bit far and then pushing it forward and then suddenly flat, not suddenly, smoothly flat up like and just rotate it around on the top of Tokyo city. But you guys are feel free to do your own creation. So for me to start it as a little bit far away angle, I will just set my scene view to a little bit far away angle in my same view and then align my camera one with the view I'm seeing in the scene. So right click it and select align with view. So my camera one will starting right here. There's one tip I can tell you guys for you to create a movable video like project for your for your own design, you always want to put the important thing in the middle. So people will always having their focus on something important you want to show them. And for camera two, I wanted to people to look in closer to my building. I'm just gonna move in forward in my scene view and right click for the camera to align with view. So my number two camera is ready. Camera three, I want to go in up a little bit. I still keep my building in the middle of the scene view and I want to make my camera three right here. So I'm just going to right click it and align with view. My camera three is ready to go and for camera four, I want to rotate it a little bit to this side and I want to go further and higher. I want it to be some here, somewhere here. Yeah. Just right click camera four, align with view. So my camera four is ready to go. If you're not satisfied with camera one angle, maybe for you to able to go back to camera one, you can right click it. And rather than select align with view, you can select align view to uh, select it just you will directly go back to your camera. I want to do camera five right now, so which means I gotta go to go back to camera four and then just going 
awkward a little bit. I want to stop my video right there to set my camera five and select camera five align with view. Okay, let's, cause you see there's one problem like Cesium meshes always need to time to loading, which means we want to give a period of loading time in our camera transmission. So let's select all of the, all of the camera shot and just move it a little bit backward. Yeah, just give camera one a longer time to load. And after we outside, we can test it, just run it to see how my camera is going. Yeah, and here's, as you can see, here's some problem happening in the, for the camera four and camera five. The reason why we will have that problem is because our camera's far clipping plan is not big enough because this value means how much we can see. And if the, if the building is further than that, if we want to look too much, but this value is not big enough, we will not able to see the, see the view further away. So for, for able to fixing that, I will just add a zero on the, on the back. And for camera five, it's the same thing. Add another zero. I want the transmission between camera two and camera one to be longer. I want people mostly spending time on transform in between in between of different views. So I will make my slope longer. Let's do another test run and see how things go. You see, last time we couldn't hear anything in the, the camera four, but after we changed the value a little bit higher, we can we can hear the number four camera can hear a little bit of sound right now. You guys are feel free to adjust the value, adjust the angle after you back home. The last step, don't leave yet. The last step is to told, is to teach you how to record all of your amazing process done as a video, the most important part but very simple. And so let's do right click on the bottom of our timeline. Then there's the Unity Editor Recorder timeline down to the very bottom. And we want to select record track. There is a recording camera track created down below for us. And then we want to right click on the other side of our recorder track, add recorder click. So this recorder clip, it means where we want to start to record our whole uh, tra uh, transformation and where we want to end it. Because we already know the system always loading a little bit at beginning. So we don't want to start it to record at the very beginning, but we do want it to record the whole thing. We can choose to, uh, to export it like what kind of quality we want. I will usually just do 1080, but you can also do 4K if or HD. I will just do HD for today. And you can also export a GIF, like the like the demo I have shown you guys at the beginning, which can help you create a poster, a moving poster for your project in your presentation, which will be really fun. So I'm just going to do a GIF this time and let me decrease the quality a little bit down because I like GIF to be having a lower quality because everything is looks a little bit blurring, pixelated, even looks better. So let's record it together. Hmm, the session takes longer time, okay. Okay, let's just adjust the previous. Okay, let's stop it and 
maybe I want to give in a longer time for for my session to process. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Okay, it's done. Then we start record re recording at this moment. It always look a little bit crushed while we doing the recording because our your laptop is processing a lot of things at the same time. is almost done yes it's done let's stop it where we will we can find our recording let's just go to the folder the unity folder where we first creating our project okay what did i call it i call it unity workshop okay it's right here and you can see there's a folder called record called recordings already created by you and the reason why i have two is because i'm doing one time of the testing run, it just automatically created for you, uh, created for me. And uh, you can see there is the final delivery. Cool, and that's everything about our workshop today.